this first Monday of Lent, let's pray with the reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you. Whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill, and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to attend our life. The Gospel of the Lord. We have just begun the Lenten journey that the Church proposes to us by listening to what God teaches us by means of His Word. The Lenten season is a privileged time to instruct our hearts in learning how to focus on the essential part of our faith. It's a journey to purification where we strip ourselves of everything that is not essential. The Gospel readings during Lent and continuous readings from one evangelist, as we have been listening to Mark, they alternate and they are specifically chosen to guide us towards Easter, so that we get there with a desire to resurrect together with Christ. Remember that yesterday we said that one does not live by bread alone, by real bread. We don't live by the things that surround us. Let's not be fools. Let's not be tempted by the bread the world offers, because it's perishable. It rots and leaves us with a feeling of emptiness. Why don't you ask your little kids or your beloved friends and relatives what they need of you? Give it a try. Look around. See who's next to you. Your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, a friend. And ask them, Is there anything I can do for you? How can I help? I guess they might answer, I need you. I need your presence in my life. We don't live by bread alone. We live by the love that stems from God's heart. Because His words are love. And we also live by the love that stems from other people's hearts. When will we face up to this truth? One does not live by bread alone. We live by something much more wonderful than not casting. The love we receive and the love we give. Today, I simply said to myself, do I need to explain much about today's glimpses of the Gospel? Of course, there's a lot I could say, 
but is there any doubt about what's really essential to our faith? In times of doubt, when we are unsure about what to do or what God's will is, when we don't know what is most important in our faith life, that's when Jesus uses the image of the final judgment, but not to make us a friend. Jesus wants to teach us what defines our present, what makes it valuable. What really matters to us in life, what's essential for us today, is the basis on which we will be judged. Once we understand what God will weigh on judgment day, we can truly find out what He expects from us. We will be judged on love alone, no more, no less. On love for those in need, for those who are hungry, thirsty and naked. The word of God is for everyone. Let's not pull the wool over our eyes. Whenever we love someone who's been systematically ignored, forgotten, despised, someone who has sinned, who's been stripped of everything, someone who's ill or in prison, someone who is not loved, every time we love them without expecting anything in return, without expecting to be noticed, cheered and clapped on the back, each time we do it, we'll be doing it for Jesus. We'll be surrendering to Him. James the Apostle says, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. We are bonded with God Father. Not only do we need to pray and live out the sacraments. Religion means we are bonded together in God's love. God loves the weak and the vulnerable, and He wants us to love Him by loving them. May today's reading from the Gospel help us realize what's really essential for our faith. Let's not be of erring hearts. Let's not get led astray. May we have a good day. And may the blessings of our merciful God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon our hearts and remain with us forever.